Hey guys, it's Susan. Welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I have a summer look for you and it's going to be what I call a sunkissed dust look. And just a heads up, there's going to be no highlighter, no shimmery products. It's going to be an all matte face. And I wanted to give off the vibe as if you just came back from the desert, the Serengeti, the safari, um, the sand dunes. You, you get what I mean, right? So why am I explaining the meaning behind the name? Okay, let's just do this. I got a haircut, by the way, guys, if you care. Uh, for reference, I got a short blunt bob, and this is the best haircut that I've ever received in my life, I think. And I'm no stranger to short hair. I've always had short hair for most of my life, but this new hairstylist that I went to, it was, in, it was a different salon. She did an amazing job, and I just love my hair now. Um, anyways, so I've made sure that my skin is fully prepped with my skincare. Uh, I made sure that everything is just fully moisturized and hydrated. And even if it is summer, my skin needs all the hydration that I can get. And with all my products, my skin is just going to soak it up. So I just like to make sure that my skin is just fully hydrated and moisturized. So the first product I'm using is the Pre Step Peach Tone Up Primer by Clio. If you don't know what a tone-up cream is, it's essentially a primer, sunscreen, and corrector all in one. And I have been getting really into them not too long ago. And this one by Clio uh, is fantastic. I have this one from Wake Make. This is a vitamin watery talk low tone-up lotion. And I don't like this product at all. This one clogs up my pores horrendously, like around this area where I have the most amount of pores and it creates more texture on my skin. And even with foundation, powder, and the whole nine yards, it's like, it just, it looks bad. It looks so bad. So I don't recommend this one, but this one by Clio is so good. As you can see, this is more of a pinky peach tone. So it's not gonna leave such a stark white cast on your skin. And also um, it's going to help brighten your complexion because of the tone. And this one feels much thinner than the Wake Make one. So it feels really light. And I like the idea of tone-up creams because I can have my sunscreen and primer and corrector all in one. And by the way, this Clio one has an SPF of 30 PA++. And like applying this on my skin, my skin feels smoother. Like it feels like I have a primer on. So you, you know, you feel like your skin's smoother. It's ready for foundation. Um, and this one creates like such a luminous glow to your skin, which I'm going to just completely take away with my matte foundation. I'm mostly using this for the sunscreen and the corrector. So for foundation, I'm using the NARS Soft Matte Foundation in Fiji Light 5. And for, for a matte foundation, I love this even with my dry skin. And I'm just going to use my fingers to spread out the product. And I'm going with my damp sponge and blending this out. And I'm making sure I bring this up all the way to my under eyes and my eyelids because we won't be applying concealer. I just want to even out my skin tone and just create a blank canvas. I absolutely love the finish of this foundation. It's matte, but it's there's such a soft, I mean like the name itself, it's such a like soft, almost velvet finish to this foundation that like leaves your skin looking so incredible. I'm just going with this one layer. Um, if you need more coverage, you're welcome to do more. 
You can go in with concealer as well to just cover up any blemishes that you want to cover. Um, in my case, I'm not going to go ahead and do any of that. I'm just going to keep it the way it is. Even if I do have a little bit of blemishes peeking through, I don't really mind it at all. Um, but the thing is, I'm not going to be applying any under eye concealer or any sort of brightener. Let's just set our face real quick. I'm going to set my face with the NARS Soft Velvet Press Powder in Eden. And I got this a little while ago, but I just used it the other day and oh my God, this powder is amazing. I'm going to just set this under my eyes first. This is so blurring. I've never seen a more blurring powder yet, but I don't know why I, I had this in my makeup collection for a while and I just forgot to use it. And then I used it the other day and I was like, Oh my God, how did I not try this out sooner? And make sure that when you're using face products that give you a matte finish and you have dry skin, that you are using a damp beauty sponge when you are applying it. Because when you use a damp sponge, it makes a difference in how the finish will look on your skin because it's going to prevent it from looking cakey or too drying because this sponge does hold up some of the excess powders and so that you won't be applying way too much directly onto your skin um, if you use like a brush for example and also the moisture in the sponge will help keep your skin a little bit hydrated when you are applying the um, more matte products it looks like i have a filter on this my skin literally looks like it has a filter on. So these two together are winners. I'm gonna fill in my brows. So I'm using the Hints Signature Brow Pencil in Dark Brown and the Brow Gel. And you see me rave about this in my previous video. And I'll just fill my brows in um, real quick. So I'll be back because you probably won't really wanna see this. Brows on. For contour, I'm gonna use the Too Cool for School Art Class by Rodin Shading. And this is such a good little if I can open it. It's such a good little bronzer contour product. I'm gonna use the two darker tones here and just mix them on my brush. And I'm gonna start where my, the top of my ears and just kind of just go in my hairline and blend in a circular motion. I'm not gonna do a contour like cutting my cheekbone. I'm just going to focus it right here and just kind of blend it towards my cheekbone, but, but only stopping like right where like the tail of my eyebrow is. And just bring it up to my forehead. And just shave off a little bit of my face so my face is a little, little bit smaller and I'm doing this because it's much softer and it doesn't look too glammed up and it kind of just makes it more natural looking I'm going to do a little nose contouring so I'm taking the middle shade here I'm going to contour my nose, but I'm going to avoid this region of my nose bridge because this is where we'll be applying the blush. So I'm just going to just contour right here, right near my eyebrow and create that depth. Right on the tip of my nose. And I'm just going to shade in my nostril too. When I discovered this brand, Too Cool for School, it was when I went to Korea back in like 2016. And I've never heard of the brand prior to the trip, but my friend really wanted to go to the store. So we went in and Korea's way of customer service in terms of retail, maybe this is only with cosmetics because I've only experienced this in cosmetic stores in Korea, but the saleswoman was literally breathing down my neck. She was right on my shoulder, breathing down my neck and following me everywhere in the store as I'm looking at different products. And I, I was interested in like a few of them. 
and I was actually going to buy them. And then she like went ahead and showed me around to other like different products while still being like literally like right here on my neck. And I felt bad if I say no, because I'm just, I don't know. I just like, I, I feel bad to say no. I actually went ahead and bought everything that she showed me. <laughs> And luckily these products are actually pretty inexpensive. So I didn't feel too bad about spending that much. And it wasn't really honestly that bad. It was just way more than, it was just way more products than I thought I would come out with. Cause I was only looking at like one or two of them. All right, I guess this is how Korea gets you with buying things. You know, you just have someone invade your personal space, which by the way, I was like, honestly a little, a little annoyed by when that did happen to me because I really do value my personal space. And I know that's like a, a very American thing, um, you know, of me to say, because we do generally do value our personal space, but I'm also an introvert. So to have someone inside my bubble kind of just getting too close to me physically, it's kind of like a pet peeve of mine. When you're just past that threshold of my bubble, it's just like, all I can, all I can think about is, why are you in my bubble? <laughs> You know what I mean? So, okay. That's me rambling and I've been done with this nose contour for a while, but I was just rambling. So anyways, um, we are going to do, let's use the same palette right here. And I'll use this for my eyes. And I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade here and just apply this all over my eyes. And I just plan on doing a light eyeshadow. I just want to bring a little depth and contour to my eyes, but nothing too extravagant. It'll just bring the look together if I have something on my eyes a bit, you know? And then I'm taking the middle shade with the same brush and I'm gonna just apply this to my lid. And then I'm gonna take the other end of this brush. It's more of a short shader brush. And I'm gonna take the darkest shade here and apply this right above my lash line. And then just take the other end of the brush again and blend it out. And then taking the middle shade again and just going down on my lower lash line. Now I'm going in with a brown liner. This is the Peri Para Ink Skinny Eyeliner in Espresso Brown. And the tip is pretty dull, so I'm just gonna go in with a liner brush like this and just apply this on my brush. So I just pick some on my brush and then I'm gonna draw a thin line. I wish I was one of those people that can wink because then I wouldn't have to struggle so hard on closing one eye. And just extend it out, create a small wing. I'm gonna take the liner again, just put some on my brush and just apply it right on your lower lash line, like right underneath your lash line. So it'll make your lash line look a little bit more full if you do have sparse lashes like me. Um, I just like to just put a little bit right underneath. I don't drag it all the way from the end to the inner corner. I just put a little bit right 
where most of my um, I put it right where most of my lashes are so that it'll give the appearance that they're more full and then I do the same on the other side that's it for that and then we are going to do just apply some mascara and I'm gonna curl my lashes real quick I'm gonna go in with a more volumizing mascara. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Waterproof. And when it's summer, you need waterproof mascara. It's a necessity. I'm actually going to go over the brown liner that I had earlier and go over it with a dark brown shade um, just to deepen it up a bit because it's not as dark as I wanted. I thought I wanted it to be this soft, but I think I wanted to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to just go in with this darkest shade here from the Rome and Rome and Rome and palette. Uh, this is the Better Than palette in number two mahogany garden, and I'm going in with deep mahogany. And I'm just going to go over that brown liner that I applied. I also forgot to line my waterline, so I'm going to do that real quick with the same brown liner. And I'm not going to apply mascara to my bottom lashes. I find that uh, keeping it bare is very fitting for this look, and I like the look of it. So now for blush, I have two blushes I'm going to use. They're both by Shiseido. These are the Minimalist Whipped Powder Blushes. This one is in Momoko, and the other is in Aiko. And I'm going to start off with the Aiko. This is more of like a brown neutral tone. So for the blush application, I like to just start off with making an upside down triangle right underneath my eye. And I'll end the upside down triangle so that the point is right at the edge of my nose. And then I'll start blending it out. When you blend it out, just blend it straight out and don't go any lower or any higher from the triangle that you created. And then just bring some to your nose. And when you do it on your nose, just make sure you do it on the bridge. Don't get the tip, just get the bridge. And this will give you a really natural, realistic sun-kissed look to the skin. And don't apply too much blush to the region that you're keeping the blush in. So like, I know some people will apply like some heat like a lot here while applying more here and then more on the bridge of their nose and it just like keeps everything uh very just strong and there's no variation to the pigment so it kind of just looks more uh 2d when you just have so much of the same i guess like level of pigment on your cheek you just want to draw most of the pigment in the center of your cheek and then blend it out. 
And then whatever's left, just put some on your nose and then blend it down. And we didn't apply the under eye concealer because I personally don't like the look of having a, um, a brighter under eye against this sunkissed blush effect because it makes your it makes you look like you had a bad tan or you went to a tanning booth and you wore goggles and then when you took off the goggles you came out looking like you know you had that like line around your your eyes and it sticks out even more when you do have um under eye brightener and also like the blush does cover some of your under eyes so like i don't think it's necessary to have concealer underneath your eyes. I love these whipped blushes by Shiseido. These are so nice, easy to blend out. The colors are so pretty and I nearly have all the colors because I just love these shades so much and I love the blush. And these don't emphasize my texture, especially when I apply it right in the center of my face. And because it's a whipped blush, it's kind of blurring. So it helps with that. And then with Momoko, I'm going to layer up my blush. And this is a nice coral blush. And I'm just going to go over where I, where I apply the first blush. And this will create more layers and dimension to the blush. So again, just creating that triangle. So I went with the more neutral brown because that'll give more of like that natural tan uh, from being out in the sun. And then I went with this um, coral shade because it'll bring out more color to the cheeks. This gives you a nice like kiss by the sun but not sunburned effect to your, uh, to your look. And again, just go over and just blend out the edges. For the lip color, I want to go for a more nude, neutral, warm tone, and I'm going to go in with the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Lipstick in 38 Sammy. And then I'm gonna go over it with some lip liner. I'm using the KKW lip liner in Nude One. And just line the outside. I just wanna clean up my lines. I'm just going in with my Fix Plus just to set my makeup real quick. So what do we think? Do you love it? Hate it? Let me know. I personally love the look. Oops. I personally love the look. Um, you can add faux freckles if you'd like. I personally just didn't do it because uh, I can't pull off the look. But actually, let me just mark my moles. I have one right here. And one right here. But you are welcome to draw in uh, some fake freckles. I know a lot of people like to do that when they do this sunkiss look. I love how this turned out. Um, I love the combination of the tones. You know, it's much more neutral and like a bit of coral on the cheeks. I think it's a good variation from the more trendy uh, sunkiss glowy makeup look that you see everywhere on the internet this summer. Um, you know, I think it's nice to have like an all matte look for once. So please comment down below about anything. I would love to hear from you and please like and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.